This morning I'm interviewing John Parks, who was a prisoner of war captured in Singapore and subsequently served with F Force on the infamous Burma Thai Railway. John, thank you for agreeing to do this interview or talk this morning. Could you, just a way, way of background, could you tell us uh, where you were born, where you went to school? <coughs> I was born at a place called Wingham, north northwest of uh, Tari. In those days, my parents lived about 50 or 60 miles away. I always say to people, when my mother discovered she was pregnant, she started walking towards Wingham. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from then on, we moved, we lived up in the Hunter River for after that for a about six or seven years, I went to school there in a small one, one teacher school there. I was in first class, and there were three of us in first class. And my brother, my elder brother, was in fourth class, and that's why I first learned to smoke. Oh, that's my cool. brother. <laughs> my brother acquired, a, I don't know how he got them, acquired a pack of twenty caps and cigarettes, mm -hmm. and and we smoked those. And of course, <clears throat> yeah, we uh, the teacher. The uh, teacher was doing the uh, uh, homework. My brother walked out. And he said, the teacher said, "Who's been smoking?" And of course, he caught my brother. And but he, he didn't know that I was, I'd been smoking too. And that was the start of everything. I smoked from then on right through the time I was a prisoner of war, yeah. off and on. Yeah, when well, I could get cigarettes. Well, we'll come back to that <coughs> point. I think that's interesting. Uh, and were you in employment before you enlisted? I was at an insurance company. I've been a few. I started there about when I was 15. I left there when I was 19 to join the army. And what prompted you to enlist? Well, I thought really a trip overseas to a certain extent, you know. And I had these friends of mine. We all joined together. We all had uh, running regimental numbers: 17, 915, 916, 917, 918. And who were those? Max. There were two Chapman boys, brothers that I'd known since fourth class at school, uh -huh. and another fellow, Jim Whitley. Jim Whitley is now dead, but the Chapman brothers are still alive. Uh -huh. And they went to Japan, and I went off to the Burma Railway Line. So, your initial training, how was it that you ended up being in the Signal School? Well, I don't really know about that. We, when I went into it, at least they asked what you, I, I didn't have any clue what to go into, you know, and they said to us, the officer there said, what do you want to be, a signal, I could go to the signals. Mm -hmm. The other two fellows, they were quite happy to go to signals as well. So from there we went to the, uh, we were sent to the training depot at Tamworth for five months, and then we were drafted off overseas. <coughs> okay, so you enlisted, what month, what year? On the, on the 15th of, I, I, I really enlisted the day after I turned 19. I put my age up to 20. But it had to be the parents' consent in those days. And I was called up on the 15th of April 1941. I went to camp at that time. Okay, and <coughs> when you're training, when, when did you know you were going to Singapore? Or did you know you were going to Singapore? Uh, yes, I did. Actually. Mm. They didn't tell you you were going to Singapore, but there were two drafts. There was a small one of about 30 odd, I knew had gone to Singapore before, and there was a big draft going to the Middle East. And I thought, well, I'll go to Singapore and we'll probably stay there for, for seven or eight months and go on to the Middle East, but it didn't quite work out that way. And what, what vessel did you sail to Singapore? On the Sibajak, a little Dutch boat. And what route? Around the bight, around the bight. Oh, you went past Perth? Yeah. Did you call so it? I called it for him, but yeah. yes. oh. It was only a small boat, very rough. Right? Oh. Okay, so that means you were in Singapore in the second half of 1941. Yes, I, I think I arrived in Singapore early October. Oh. Now, the, the Japs, as I recall, Pearl Harbor was early December. On the 8th of December, and, and that's roughly the time that the Japs went into northern Malaya. That's right. That's Where was your unit deployed to then? I was in Johor Bahru, well, a lot of, they were all over the place. Signals are a, a divided, as you probably know, they divide you know, six different sectors. Some go with the infantry, some go with the artillery, and they were, they'd just been spread around that way. But I was, and I started a new, a new section of signal number four company. Oh. And I was in number four company and being a reinforcement, and I was the linesman. 
but others are all spread out all over the place. Had we not been made prisoners of war, I would never have known most of the signals. Yes. It came together with prisoners yes. of war. Yeah, I understand. <coughs> Okay, so you're in Johor Bahru. Johor Bahru. Then let's get, move forward now into through January and we come to February when, as I recall, the 8th of February the Japs started bombing <coughs> Singapore. I, on the 8th of February we were to book a team out of Singapore to camp there for a few days after we evacuated the mainland. We evacuated the mainland about the 30th of January, I think it was first then, and uh, we would book a team of <coughs> after a few days because the, as soon as the Japs ran we would go um. and as head, I was linesmen, we were laying lines at headquarters and we were <coughs> pulling lines through the rubber from an observation point all night one night and we, they never ever used, we, we had to get out the next morning um. but at the same time on that night as we walked out of this rubber plantation a pommy guard took, let's go, five, shot a five out of a Tommy gun at us. Mr. Hull five. There were five walking out of breath. It says something for, <laughs> for this marksmanship of the palms, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> John, uh, there was something else when you were at Johor Baru that concerned the Sultan. Uh, can you tell us about that? The Sultan of Johor was looked on as a fifth colonist. And there were four of us sent to Johor Bahru, exchanged the check lines, and we, we had a, a, a line across his, so that every time he rang up, we could listen. But no one ever told him they had to speak Malay to listen to him. Yeah. And it was useless. Yes. And most of our time they were spent on listening to women of an night on the automatic exchange and what what they were going to do when the war came. Indeed. Yeah. So. We the, the period in um, Singapore must have been dreadful. Very short. Yeah. I was, after we left <coughs> uh, Bukatima, we were, I don't know where we were, we weren't camped anywhere then, we were just working and, and I was pulling lines through the rubber there overnight, it's Holland Road, we had divisional headquarters, and I don't think we even got the lines connected up before we evacuated to the, to the gardens in the Botanic Gardens in Singapore, we were there for a few days and you could hear the Jab artillery, you'd hear the guns go off and you'd jump in your trench and the, the shells would go over your head. And uh, <coughs> there was a stage there, we, uh, uh, someone had some mortars and we went up the top of the hill and so said, we don't know where they went into the Jab line. <laughs> we set a whole thing of water over the Jab line and raced back down the hill against the gardens. Incredible. Yeah. So. When the capitulation occurred, what it must have been a, a was strange peace, experience. Peace it was, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But it was also strange bit not knowing what to do, mm. what was going to happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. And you had no, there was no forewarning? That no, 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 no. Mm. It was a, a bit of a shock really when they mm. the surrendered. Well, I was, I was, obviously, when you think back then now, they had nowhere to go on it. They ran out of land. Yes. And it was a bit of a shock when the surrender came, but it was obvious it had to happen. Mm. And of course, the Japs for, didn't worry us very much, they didn't come around, uh, around where we were at all for quite a few days. We were just milling around in one place now. Mm. Now, that's February to 1942, and H Force moved up to Thailand. F Force, uh, you mean F? F Force, yes, F -force. sorry, you're quite right. I apologise. Um, uh, about April no, 1943. On the 17th of April, Air Force. Yeah. We, we trained at Singapore in these steel rice trucks. Yeah. And we spent five days in those going to uh, Bampong in Thailand. And which train, do you know which which lot you went up in? I was on the first lot of Air Force. Oh, so 650 of you have crammed yeah, into that train. Yeah. Okay. And that Pete Henry was on that too. He would have been on that. Mm. Roy Mills would have been on that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> when did you actually know you were going to be part?